Hey everyone, Prepan Paul here. I'm doing a follow-up video on a test of a UV25 from Baofeng that I did. And thanks to a couple of users' comments, found out I wasn't doing it right. Well, I was, but I had some issues with some of the hardware I was using. So let's go back to the table and give this UV25 11 watt HT from Baofeng another look. This is the Baofeng UV25 11 watt. First thing up front, let's take a look. This is the TYT380 DMR radio, and this is the TID radio H3. You can tell that the UV25 is much larger. If you took this top half off, you've basically got an, an average sized HT radio. The top half has this large speaker and large button to turn it on. Welcome, frequency mode. And change the volume. The menu's the same as other Baofeng radios, and it even comes with that ever so needed Roger Beep. The set that I bought came with this large flexible antenna and then the fold away style antenna for more compact use. Let's go to the bench and retest this radio now, having corrected some of the issues I had on the previous test video. So another issue that came up in the comments, thanks to KS0JD, I appreciate your comment, is there could be potential coax loss. So when you get these tiny SAs or the nano VNAs, they usually come with these small little coax cables to connect everything. Well, I thought I'd give it a test. I tested this one, great. I tested this one, great. However, I tested this one and it was not so great. So this time, I'm throwing that coax out and attaching the attenuator directly to the Tiny SA Ultra. Now let's finally give this Baofeng UV25 11 watt radio a proper test. Okay, I've got the Tiny SA set, negative 40 dB to offset the 40 dB attenuator. Now this attenuator is a 10 watt max, so I also set the radio to low power just to be safe. We're gonna start with 443.300, but we're gonna wait till that spike disappears when somebody's not talking currently on that Wires X radio. All right, let's give it a try. We're starting on 443.300, so we should see a spike just to the right of this current chart. Well, there you go, 443.94. That's a very clean signal with no other spikes so that's a clean looking signal right there. Next, we're gonna try 149.62. Now this time we should see this more on the left side of the screen because remember we're starting at 100 megahertz. Here we go. Okay, so we've got the 149 on the left. We've got another harmonic in the middle, but that's a fairly clean signal and the, and the far right is the third harmonic most likely of the 400 megahertz. But overall clean signal. A big difference from what I tested in the earlier video by correcting the issues, getting rid of the bad coax, and making sure I'm not doing this when someone is talking on a Wires X node that's transmitting right under my desk. Okay, so one thing I wanted to test as well is I wanted to zoom in to each frequency, both 2 meter and 70 centimeter, and see how close of a frequency we are on the spectrum analyzer to what frequency we're hoping to be transmitting on. So let's put those old man spectacles back on so that I can read the tiny VA, the tiny SA, excuse me. And what I've got is I've got it set now to from uh, 100, you can see at the bottom there, 100 megahertz with an end frequency of 200 megahertz with a center of 150. So now I've got the radio back to low power and we are on, let's make sure, we're on 149.62. Now let's see what number we get on the scope here. So it looks like the number is 149.64. So that's pretty close. Let's try 70 centimeters. Again, we're going to set in the software. I'm going to set it from 400 and stop at 500 and the middle frequency will be 450 and we'll see where that goes. Oh, 
I've got to reconnect or restart it. Okay. Well, there we go. We've got someone talking on the wires X node. Let's just get ready. We're on 443.3. And when they've finished, we're going to give it a try. All right, looks good. So we're hitting at 443.34. So that's good as well. Another test passed for the UV25. Okay, we're to the power test. Let's see if these changes affected the power output of the radio. I would think of either of them having an effect. It's most likely that bad coax that I had connected last video. So I've got connected to the smallest coax that I know works and is clean. I do have a couple connectors here. There might be, I suppose, potentially some loss in that. But let's give it a try. We're already powered on. And we're going to go to power. We're currently on low on two meters. Let's power on our Surecom. And let's give it a try so low power is putting out 3.3 watts okay let's stay on low power and we're going to go up to 440 give it a try 2.73 watts okay let's switch to middle power all right and let's start with 70 centimeter and check the power on medium or middle power. Looks like about 4.5. Let's switch to two meter. Let's change the power to middle and give that a try. So two meter putting out about seven watts, 6.94 on middle power. Now let's try and shoot for the 11 watts. High watts, here we go. Two meter, moment of truth. Let's see what it does. And there we go, 9.2. Even if we gave some loss to these connectors, you're still not even getting nine and a half or 10 watts. So. We're not reaching it on two meters. Let's see if 70 centimeters gives us a higher power reading. Here we go. And 70 centimeters is even less at 8.8. .8. Now I do recall the previous test was lower than this on both bands, so that coax was having an effect. Well, there you have it. We've tested it on two meters, 70 centimeters, middle, low, high power. We didn't quite reach that 11 watt, watt, watt mark. At the most, we were just over nine on two meters. So overall, we've got it tested, but the harmonics, it's clean. The power isn't what they claim, but you could get about nine watts out of it, which is more than other five watt bow fangs. One last note, I just wanted to thank again WECB640 and KS0JD for their great comments and suggestions. I took them to heart, used them, and actually found that the radio did, did perform well on harmonics. So thanks again, guys, and to you sad hams out there, these are two great examples of how you can make a comment without being a sad ham. So hopefully this helps you if you're looking at buying this UV25 11 watt. Hopefully this is helpful to everyone if they're looking at purchasing the UV25. As opposed to my previous video and it failing the harmonics, it passes the harmonics today. And again, I've learned something thanks to the two great comments on YouTube on the previous video that sometimes the testing equipment needs to be also tested. Thanks again, guys. 73.